We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, He parted the raging sea, my God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise, we shout out your praise, we 
sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he died upon that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars, and now we were royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars. prisoners now we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing praise there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today we won't be quiet we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the lord our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Amen. It's so good to be here with you guys. It's so good to gather in this place and uh, just to be reminded that that God loves us and. Um, just a, what a wonderful blessing it is that God gave us each other. I just I look around and I see you guys um, together as a family. It just makes my heart feel good. I'm so happy to be here. So uh, we're going to keep singing. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes, steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your Stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide, and I am not captive to the light. I'm not afraid. Leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. 
there's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your Stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. I'm standing in your love. I'm standing in your love. I'm standing. have a seat. Good morning. My name is Kenny Hubble, and I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Palmasia Presbyterian Church, and it is a wonderful thing for us to be in this space together. Uh, I'm originally from a city called Tacoma, just south of Seattle in Washington State, and one of the favorite things about going home is that I just get to be I just get to go and I get to sit on my couch and I'm not worried about impressing upon other people. I just get to be comfortably who I am. And some of the language that we like to use in this service, the house of the Lord, the family of faith, um, is reminding me of that experience this morning. I I feel really assured that we are uh, connected as a family of faith by the fact that I can come here and feel comfortable and just be and invite you all to just be alongside me and we don't have to be here to impress We don't have to put on a mask. We don't have to pretend. We just get to be. Uh, And I find that really liberating. It's it's really great that you get to just be who you are, and that's enough. I think we often walk through our days, our weeks, thinking, oh, we got to be that certain thing. We got to earn that approval. We got to earn that love. Uh, Not here. Not here. Today, here in this place, we get to be and we are loved for who God made us to be. So thank you for joining me in this family of faith and and joining comfortably in worship today. Friends, we have uh, a handful of things happening in the life of the church. Uh, If if you don't pick this up regularly, please start. This is our PCPC Weekly. It's available online as well, but it gives us an overview of what's happening in the life of the church, Uh, and I just want to generally point us to the summer the summer is right around the corner, and especially if you have children and youth, uh, sign-ups for summer uh, trips and experiences are available to you, and I just want you to take advantage of those opportunities in the, the weeks ahead. We continue to uh, move through this Gathering Around God's Word program. Since January, we have committed ourselves for the calendar year to to preach and teach and read through the Bible, and we're still about that work. This morning, we find ourselves on the fifth Sunday in Lent in 2 Kings. That's peculiar. We don't usually find ourselves in 2 Kings in this Lenten journey, but because we are gathering around God's entire word, that is where we find ourselves today. Um, We'll uh, also lift up the one great hour of sharing in the, um, the offering moment, but I just report to you in general that I'm excited for that moment. I'm excited for that announcement because we are just uh, doing wonderful things as it relates to this one great hour of sharing that we have committed to. Finally, on the back of these PCPC weeklies, you have your um, Holy Week schedule. You, it's a whole page because we do a lot of things on Holy Week, and so this is a great right on the fridge, right there, just so you know what opportunities are ahead of you for Holy Week. Uh, That is the height of kind of the Christian calendar. If you really want to have a sense of the the bedrock, the foundation of our faith, come participate on Holy Week. That gives us a real thorough sense of what it means to uh, believe in this story, this gospel story that looks like it's going to end on a cross and instead it ends with an empty tomb. And I just invite you to participate in those Holy Week services. 
as a family of faith, we gather in both the times of ease and joy and also in the times of hardship and challenge. And so we lift up just the prayer uh, hopes and concerns of the congregation. First, we want to keep in our prayers Hazel Arnett, who is in the hospital. We pray for uh, healing and uh, for comfort for Hazel. We lift up prayers of sympathy to the Murray family and the recent death of Sandy Murray, who is a beloved mother and grandmother of this community. And so we give thanks to God for the life of Sandy and ask that um, God's peace and presence of, of counsel and hope are with that family. We also uh, have a few things to celebrate. We have a, a birth in our midst. Um, Bree and Drew Palmer have given birth to William Erickson Palmer, and the proud grandparents are Thomas and Martha Price. And so we are grateful for the new life around us, and we ask that God uh, meets that family in this new chapter of their life. And we also have two, two separate 50th wedding anniversaries today, which is just wild. Um, Sylvia Campbell and Bob Campbell are celebrating 50 years of their wedding, and also um, Sherry Leffers and... Um, David Leffers are celebrating their 50th anniversary, and so that's just a wonderful thing. I, I have not been alive for 50 years, not, not even really that close to 50 years, so to be married that long is extraordinary, and we give uh, uh, thanks to God for the gift of marriage. Friends, at this time, um, well, no, let's not read the scripture. Let's pray together. Please pray with me. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this house, this place of worship, this chance to gather as the family of faith, knowing that you love us just the way that we are. We give you thanks for the security and the safety and the peace that we can find in this place. And we lift up prayers for those who do not have that same sense of safety and security. We lift up those in Ukraine and the violence happening in that place, and we ask for your peace to be known that we might have a sense of direction. And in this season where we across the globe feel hopeless, uh, give us a means to your grace. Give us a means to help, help us become an extension of your love and grace in the world around us. Lord, we thank you and trust in the hope and the joy and the love and the peace found in Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Uh, last week was 1 Kings, and that highlighted a particular prophet, Elijah, with a J. We're going to talk about Elijah, and we're also going to talk about Elisha, with a S-H-A. And so I understand that that can be confusing, but this story actually pertains to both the prophets, Elijah and Elisha. Elisha is Elijah's pupil. And so there's this uh, sense of that coming to an end, and Elijah, you'll see, is um, wrapped up in the whirlwind and it's an ascension story. Um, and it's, so it's fascinating, and it, and it reads kind of like this epic tale, and I want us just to engage with the dynamics at hand here. Hear now God's holy word. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Giggle. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elisha said to him, Elisha, stay here. For the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. And the company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. 
But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they, were, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, and the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite all the children present to join me for this morning's children's message. Let us welcome them by singing. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? To see justice and love Was, was that a new rendition? Yeah, and it was in the wrong key, too. So. Well, it, that's why they weren't with me. It was especially it interesting because it was the Should wrong key. Should we do key. it again? No, no, I think that's enough. Thanks. <laughs> Boys and girls, thank you for being in worship with us. You make church better for us when you are here. I just read the story about a man named Elijah, Elijah with a J, and this man, and the life that he lived, you would look at Elijah and you would think, that guy is a superhero. Because Elijah has some unique power that God grants Elijah. Namely, celestial fire. Throughout the book of 1 Kings, Elijah, with, through the power of God, will bring about fire in these miraculous ways. I wonder if you could pick a superpower, one superpower, what superpower would you pick? Uh, I would pick flying. Flying. What a good one. Absolutely. Flying is a great superpower. What else? What, what superpower would you bring? I'll jumping. Jumping. It's like flying, but shorter. Yes. Jumping and flying. Any other superpowers that you would like? I know it's kind of a, a big question. We might need some more time to think about this. I think some of the, the ones that we talk about are like invisibility or super strength or super speed. Emmy, you got one more. Go for it. Jumping as high as the sky, which is not quite flying still, but just as fun. Thank you, boys and girls. All right, Abram, one last one. I'll give you two also. Swimming, the power of swim. Well, I think many of us actually have that power, but maybe super swimming like Aquaman, like that, that sort of power that we could have in, in swimming or in the ocean. Yeah, boys and girls, there's a lot of things that we think about as superpowers, things that we cannot do, but I actually think we have a superpower, all of us. All of us have this superpower, and when we think about it, it doesn't feel so super because it's something that we see all the time. I think our superpower that we can all use is to love people, to love people well. When you think about how superpowers are used, it's to help people, right? When you see a superhero rushing to a moment, it's to help people. And I think that actually looks like love. And so when we are loving each other and loving our neighbors and loving our family and loving those that we don't even know, I think we are demonstrating something sort of miraculous, powerful. In love, we can help go, someone go from a really dark and scary place into the light and hopeful place. 
With love, we can take the hurting people and offer them healing. In love, we can encourage and say things that really change a person's day and maybe even change a person's life. I want us to hold on to love with the idea that it's kind of a superpower that we have. But what good is a superpower if we don't use it, right? Imagine if you could fly, or you could jump as high as the sky, or you could swim so fast, or if you had any of those superpowers, but you just chose not to. It'd be sort of strange. So for us to have the superpower of love is to say, let's use that superpower of love. Let's move towards each other with a lot of care, with a lot of attention, with a lot of affection. I think that's when we are, are utilizing the power that God gives us, this power to love. Boys and girls, thank you for being here this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Please pray with me. God, we look to you and we know that all love comes from you. We share this thing with you. And in sharing love with you, God, you give us this power to love other people, to love ourselves, and to love you back. Help us use this love in the world to bring about good things, healing to the hurt, healing to the broken, help for those who need it. We make these prayers in your son's name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. I invite you to stay at the prayer ground or to return to your seats or maybe help with the offering if you've been tasked with that. And at this time, I invite the ushers to take up this morning's offering. And as they do so, I encourage you to lift up your own prayers of thanksgiving. Friends, before we pray over this morning's offering, we have uh, really two things to lift up as it relates to the one great hour of sharing. Uh, the first is a video we're about to show you. This was um, done by our justice seekers, our, our fourth and fifth graders. And, and it reminds us that our children are, are listening, our children are watching, and so they see what's happening in the world. And as um, Ukraine has been in our hearts and prayers, it's been in the hearts and prayers of our justice seekers. And so they went about the work of uh, producing this video as a means for, for them generating support. Um, uh, and I'll talk a little more about it, but I think, Sherry, if we're ready for the video, let's show that. I'm donating $4 to Ukraine because Russia has bombed their things and need like their houses and food. I'm donating $4 to Ukraine because a lot of bad things are happening and a lot of important things to them are getting destroyed. Would you like to be stuck in Poland with just a backpack doing nothing for days? If not, donate $4 to Ukraine so they can have something to do. Help Ukraine, please. I'm Nevea and I'm giving $10 to Ukraine because there are a lot of people who are sick and like a need and they need our help and yeah, basically.
to donate four dollars to Ukraine to help people there that are trying to start a new life and don't that don't have a lot of money. I'm giving four dollars to Ukraine because Ukraine is suffering from Putin. Donate four dollars to Ukraine to um, help people who are in Ukraine and don't have enough to help themselves survive. Refugee to go to Poland. We are donating money and I donated four dollars to Ukraine to help them because I don't want to feel like that. I made this. And this one too. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm grateful that our children are so sweet, but they're also uh, keen on joining the church in its larger ministry. And they have decided to, to move towards this kind of easy to remember, $4 for Ukraine. And, and you can give on the website listed, uh, located here. And there's also through our, um, our typical pomacia.org slash giving uh, website, you can move towards supporting Ukraine. And so they've just decided to join us in this, basically this one great hour of sharing. And, and we're grateful for the work that they've been about in, in helping us move towards uh, healing. And you, you heard them speak about our relationships um, with Poland through the Protestant seminary. And we're just grateful for our children's work as they went about this, um, this, this fundraising. And the sort of the book in this conversation, I'm going to invite, I think, both Marsha Rydberg and Michael Maddox to come speak and give us a report on how that donation has been going. Folks, we are just here to say thanks because it's been an amazing journey. You remember about a month ago the war broke out and we decided to do a pivot Last week I talked about hope. Hopefully you got to see some of the Nehemiah action. But that was originally our one great hour of sharing recipient. And we decided to pivot when the war broke out because we knew it was so important. And you all responded with amazing generosity. And Marsh is going to share about that. You probably remember in one of those God kind of serendipities that um, two of the people from the Polish seminary were here a week or so before the war started. And they decided they'd move their seminary program around. Yes, they're still studying, but their people, both students and um, the teachers, are going all out for Ukraine. They're working with some churches and with some uh, Christian charitable organizations. Biggest need, obviously, is shelter, finding places for people. If you shelter them, you need to feed them. Uh, they, come mostly moms and kids with nothing but what's on their back. So they bought blankets, because it's still cold there. And um, one of my favorite stories is they've got several Ukrainian students. One of their female students is an EMT. They've rented an ambulance and go back and forth with medicine and bring back sick people from Ukraine. And several of the other students are working with them on that. A final little clue, and then I'm going to give it back to my friend Michael. Um, Boytek, the president of the seminary, said one day they just bought some candy. And he said, yeah, I know that wasn't healthy. And they gave it to those little kids. And he said, you should have seen their faces. I can't do this without a tear. Um, they, they, it was heartbreaking. But it was like... Finally, there was a little ray of sunshine in the world, one little piece of candy. That's how bad it is over there. And, and you heard the $4 message. Well, guess what? God loves people that help the hurting people. And you all have done beyond our wildest imaginations. And today, at this point, we've raised over $125,000, okay? That's just in four weeks, praise be God, that you all did that much giving. And if you still feel inspired, these are the envelopes, or you can go online. We just appreciate all that you've done. Wojtek and his church and all the hurting people are just so grateful for the generosity that you've shown. Praise God, thank you. Yeah, it's, a, it's a staggering amount. Uh, over 125,000. Think about it, that in terms of uh, blankets and meals and help. I, I mean, that's just extraordinary. So 
I am so grateful for uh, the generosity of this community and the, the willingness to, to give to meet to this need. Uh, friends, let us pray over this morning's tithes and offerings. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many ways that you have blessed us. You have shown your care for us in the forms of relationships and resources, time and talent. We now ask a blessing upon these gifts, that they may become an extension of your love and grace in the world around us. Amen.
Please pray with me. Faithful God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we might experience your presence anew in this moment. Amen. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of 2 Kings in the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 7. Now the wife of a member of the company of prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. But a creditor has come to take my two children as slaves. Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She answered, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. He said, go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not just a few. Then go in and shut the door behind you and your children and start pouring into all these vessels. When each is full, set it aside. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her children. And they kept bringing vessels to her and she kept pouring. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. But he said to her, There are no more. And then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your children can live on the rest. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in 1 Kings, we have the prophet Elijah whose miracles often happen in the form of this celestial fire. It's this, this big, exciting miracle that happens on this grand scale. And in 2 Kings, we have the prophet Elisha, who demonstrates miracles that give life. In Elisha, we see a parable in the miracles of Jesus. In just a couple of chapters, if we were going to keep reading from here for the next couple chapters, we would see all these things happen. The story of the abundance of oil, the raising, uh, raising someone back to life, feeding a hundred people out of a meager provision of bread and fruit, purifying a pot of stew that was poisoned, and curing a man with leprosy. I hope those miracles sound somewhat familiar. They're miracles that we have seen Jesus do in the Gospels. In the ascension story of Elijah, Elisha asked for something particular from him. Do you recall? A double portion of your spirit. That was, that was the question Elijah raised. He said, what, what might I give you? And Elisha responds, a double portion of your spirit. And this wasn't greediness. This wasn't Elisha saying, I want to be more powerful than you. It was actually an action of humility. It was to say, I've got some pretty big shoes to fill. And it would seem that this double portion of the spirit is not two times the fire but rather the ability to bring about healing in life. I don't think that's a small detail. I don't think it's a small detail that Elisha might actually be twice as powerful as Elijah, twice the spirit, twice the capacity, and that doesn't show up on this big, grand, fiery stage, but rather comes through the forms of miracles that heal and bring about provision. We inherit the same spirit do we realize this? We inherit the same spirit. The spirit of God lives in us. In our baptism, in our faithfulness, we are promised the same spirit that lived in Elijah and lived in Elisha. I think for most of us, on most days, we don't really live like we have much access to God's spirit. I think most days and most places, we don't feel really empowered enough to be about the work of miracles in the world. 
whoops, we're wrong. We, we, we miss this. We have a sense of what miracles are, and we think we cannot be a part of them. Y'all, we have some legitimate access to being empowered to be about miraculous work in the world. Especially if we are getting at the heart of what miracles are and what they seek to do, how they function. Sure, miracles can be super supernatural. It can be some extraordinary feat of some extraordinary power. Chariots of fire, we see in the first reading this morning. The parting of the seas, resurrection. That are, those are miracles on a grand scale, and they're indeed extraordinary. Not likely something we will see or experience up close. But what about these miracles that relate to provision and healing? I chose this passage of filling up jars, the widow filling up jars of oil to support her family, because it was one of the most mundane of the miracles that Elisha performs. Yes, something unique is happening, but the, the, the story that, that's unfolding to us isn't chariots of fire, isn't parting the seas, isn't being wrapped up in the whirlwind or a resurrection story. It's something about helping this widow find a way to provide for her family. We have the tendency to focus then on the ever-flowing oil. That's where a lot of our attention goes. And naturally, that grips us. Our attention moves towards those things because we're like, well, we can't do that. That's, that's where God is in the story. But that's not where God is only in the story. The, the, the magnificent thing might be, yes, these, these overflowing jars of oil, but the larger story speaks to something, I think, more important. The impact is what's being accomplished through this miracle. And that support that's provision of this widow who was not left with many choices, who wanted to provide for her family. The heart of the miracle was simply to help, was simply to bring about some considerable change to a family who was lacking hope. So let's set aside the supernatural part of miracles for just a moment. I think we often think miracle is synonymous with the supernatural. It's, it's actually more just an event of God's presence. That's what a miracle is. And so let's set aside the supernatural parts of a miracle and, and think for a moment about the miraculous things that happen around us that we might not often realize, the things that we don't actually view as a miracle. And this isn't a lowering, lowering of our expectations of miracles either. It's not to say that these are any less impressive. It's to say how God might utilize human instruments and regular interactions as a means to experience a godlike event. Here are just a few miracles that I've experienced in the last couple of weeks. I sat around a fire pit with a good friend. You know him, David Bonham in North Carolina. That's where I was last week. That was meaningful. There was, there was miracle in that. My son Bennett made a friend on the playground. That was like miracle times two. He's a pandemic baby and dealing with social anxiety. Like he's, that was a really impressive thing that he could, he could wave blow kisses and pat on the head. My, my son, was, that was a, a highlight for me that week. Also just standing in a sanctuary with young adults, talking about the parables of Jesus, interacting in conversations with these young people. That felt like a miracle to me. All these things were life-giving. All these things were healing in some way. Yeah, they were normal, sure. It wasn't supernatural. But does that mean that God wasn't a part of it? I experienced all of that as simple, but encouragements, graces nonetheless. God showing up in my life to provide, to heal. Do they not come from God if they are common? That would be tricky, would say that God only interacts with us, engages with this world in some huge way. And most, of, most things of, or most times and most days are not these huge encounters, but something we experience as normal. I think uh, every encounter of love stems from a loving God whose creation and design revolve around such encounters. Simple acts of love and fellowship, community. 
I wonder what miracles have you seen lately? Putting on sort of this new lens, separate something that has to be so big and grand and supernatural, and think about the places where you have just found healing and provision. This morning, we are witnessing a miracle in our children being present with us. The sound, the presence of children in our midst is something of such vitality. It gives life. It gives energy to this presence and place. They raise money for Ukraine on their, their own initiative. That's miraculous that their empathy, their hearts are growing in this way that they want to go support those in need. What encounter with a neighbor or a friend or a family member had you filled up had you leaving that encounter feeling so much better? Where did you find healing? When did you find a fresh start? Friends, all of those things are miraculous. Those are God events. Those are places where we find renewal, restoration, hope, help, love. So my hope is that we can move through life with a little more awareness of what is good, and grace-filled and miraculous. It's simply appropriate to have gratitude for these places in which God certainly shows up. But let's also consider what miracles we might enact in the world. Friends, I think sometimes we have too passive of a faith. Our faith is like God is doing work, and if we just believe God's doing work, that is faith. We have to move towards partnership. We have to move towards doing what God is doing, helping with what God is doing. I think we should read stories like this where Elisha helps a widow, and we think, well, how can we do that? How can we be like the prophet of Elisha, filled with the Holy Spirit to do good and right in the world? This church has shown up to meet the need of Ukraine. That's one way in which we are enacting miracle in the world. We raise over $125,000 in one month's time. It's huge. It's a good example of seeing a need and then moving towards it. I hope we keep committed to that cause. What other needs might we meet, though, on a smaller scale? It's kind of funny to think about. I think sometimes we, we coach you off to like, oh, bigger, better, higher, shoot, shoot for the stars kind of thing. But I think sometimes we can then get lost in that bigness. And the vision becomes too big, and we feel like, oh, well, I don't know. I'm not good enough. I'm not capable enough to go about that. So I want us to look more down into a smaller vision, little vision, little ideas, because those, I think, feel very reachable. Who are you in proximity to help? Who's in your natural orbit? The person, the people that you see frequently. What gifts are at your disposal? What has God blessed you with? Because every single one of you can do something that I cannot do. Because of your capacities, because of your skills, because of your gifts and talents, because of your situation and circumstances. What's the best way to offer care? Time, energy, resources, attention. Sometimes we settle into a patient space awaiting, for, awaiting God to move in the world. We want to just trust that God is about this good work, and I think God is about good work in the world. But then we have to be reminded that we are instilled with this same spirit, the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of Elisha, that we are capable in bringing about change and healing and provision all the same. A spirit of love is what we have. This is what God has created us with a capacity for, a spirit of love and a means to be nourished. We do not do this successfully apart from God. It's to say that we have to stay in tandem with what God is doing, with what God has blessed us with. Our capacity comes from God, but God gives us capacity. Friends, we move to the, the table as a sign of the ways that God meets us in this world. Boys and girls at the playground, I'm going to invite you to to start moving back towards your seats and to your families as we move towards the sacrament of communion. Friends, I have, um, I mentioned this a little bit in my sermon. I have, uh, I've been doing kind of an experimental worship 
at Bayshore Presbyterian Church. You might not be aware of this. On Sunday evening, since the season of Lent started, I met, I've been meeting in Bayshore's uh, sanctuary on the bay with about a dozen or so young adults. That's, that was the goal, to have this really small net and to have some, some relationships that we've already formed, invite them into this space and do worship a little differently. And a part of those uh, worship services is communion every Sunday, every Sunday evening. So we've done this for four weeks now. And a part of the conversation I have around the table, around communion, is to remind folks that this is a family meal. I often think we go towards communion a little too solemnly. It's for it too quiet. I don't know about your family meals. When you're sitting around the Thanksgiving table with your family and friends, is it so quiet? Or is it just the, the voices of adults? No, I don't think so. And so as we think about communion, as we think about gathering around the table in the kingdom of God, we are reminded that it's for everyone of every age. Our children will be helping us this morning with the prayer of thanksgiving. And I just want you to be aware that this is, this is good and right. This is what inclusion around the table looks like. This is an expression of love, something that nourishes us. Friends, the scriptures say that they will come from the north and the south and the east and the west to sit at the table in the kingdom of God. All those who seek to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ are invited to partake in this meal that God has prepared. Boys and girls, I'm going to invite you to come stand up on the platform facing the congregation. Sorry, Emmy. I meant these particular boys and girls, but thank you. You'll be up here soon enough. Are we in the right order? I want to make sure I have. Uh, folks, we have on the screen as well, this, is a, this prayer of thanksgiving will be a, a prayer that we all participate in. This is a call and response. We have leader, we have people, and we have child. I'm going to be the leader. You all are going to be the people, and our children are going to be the children, and they're going to be the specific child for this. And I'm going to be heading from right to left. Okay. Well, friends, let us move towards the prayer of thanksgiving. Boys and girls, you can um, follow us along on your sheets here. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Why do we give thanks at this table? What do we remember at this table? Why do we eat bread at this table? Why do we drink from the cup at this table? Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and juice, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may become the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Let us say again the Lord's Prayer this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you for being a part of that prayer. You can return to your seats. On the night before Jesus died, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed with my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it also to remember me. And friends, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of Jesus Christ until he comes again. We have done uh, 
communion a variety of ways in the past few months. This is, I think, going to feel closest to normal. We are still not doing intinction, which is where you typically would tear off a piece of the loaf and dip it in the cup, but we will have the elements for you to, to move forward in. And so we have four sets of communion servers. They will uh, stand in front of each section of chairs. Once I invite you forward, I'll ask that you go from the first row towards the back row and come through in the aisle and return the opposite side. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite our communion servers forward to help me serve the elements. And Tina and Michael, I wonder actually if you'll go in that far right section. Thank you. Mark and Dennis, I hope that you'll serve on this uh, section right here. Richard and Eileen, if you will serve on the far side over there. Kate, would you help me serve communion this morning? Thank you. Friends, we say the gifts of God for the people of God. At this time, I invite you to come forward and take up this, more, this, uh, this communion this morning. Friends, let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for the ways that you nourish body, mind, and spirit. You have empowered us to be about the work of love in the world. Encourage us to do so. Help us experience your presence anew, that your spirit might move us towards people in every uh, situation, that we might offer care and compassion to all those that we meet, that we might be about the ministry of healing and provision. We give you thanks for these good gifts and the ways that they nourish us. Amen. Thank you, Kenny. Let's stand and sing this last song together. Yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails. Will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. No waiting. The same 
God is never late. He's working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. for joy when my heart is heavy all my days oh yes I will I count on one thing the same God that never fails will not fail me you won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. By the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, glorify, glorify the name of all names, and nothing can stand against. I choose to pray. Glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Friends, let us declare our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, go now ready to do the miraculous work of love, the miraculous work of provision and healing, Notice that every encounter, every relationship is a means towards grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.